let's grab day two. Day two, Zuzu's Petals. And this one is Superwash Merino and Stellina. So let's read a little bit about Zuzu's Petals. Let me pull it out of the bag. Ooh, it's got that pretty sparkle in it. If you've not seen It's a Wonderful Life, then put it on your watch list this Christmas. It's a proper feel-good tearjerker from 1946 and the inspiration for this blend. Zuzu is the daughter of George Bailey, the main character, and gives them some petals to glue back onto a rose after they fall off. Oh! These are tucked safely away in his pocket and make an appearance at a pivotal point later in the film. Being such an old film, it is in black and white, which meant we got to use our imagination to bring the petals to life. We decided to use the pastel tones of our Superwash Merino range to blend a mostly solid shade. By using pastel as a base, we were able to increase its vibrancy with smoothie and then tone it down with the coolness of mousse. Finally, we felt this, that it needed something to give it a little bit of lift, and this was added in the form of our golden Stellina to represent her famous line, every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. While the final blend isn't suitable for those wanting to felt, it is exceedingly spinnable with gentle handle and machine washing resilience. Well, that sounds lovely. So what are we going to do with this pinky blend with the gold Stellina? That is the question. So we're going to unwrap it. It's got an almost mauve undertone. Very, very pretty with that subtle gold gleam. I think we might just spin it normal. You know what I should do is grab my spinner's book of yarn designs and we'll just have a flip through there and find something. Because I have a lot of days to go and a lot of yarn to spin, so we want to get through it all. So I think this one, because we went highly textured with day one, we might just do a nice, simple, we'll go nice and thin and chain ply it maybe. Or maybe we'll make a single and blend it with something else. Ooh, here's a thought. Let's have a look at day three and see what this one is. So this is Cindy Lou, which would be, of course, Cindy Lou Who. I wonder... Now, I think I'll save that one. Hmm. I think we're just going to spin this as a single and maybe hold on to it to ply with something else. And I just looked down and saw Jack Frost. And I'm thinking that would be an interesting blend. I'm really thinking that I would like these as a two ply. Maybe we'll do half as a two ply, and then we could have one chain ply of each color. So I'm going to take half of this and half of the Jack Frost. Oh, here comes Tay Tay. She's like, What's going on, Ma? Talk to yourself again. That's what we're going to do for starters. See, if we want to get an idea of what a two-ply would look like, we can just take these and twist them together. And I think it's going to make a really interesting yarn. All right, I'm going to get started. We'll do half of this, half of this, both singles, ply them together. And then we'll decide what to do with the other half. One second. I just wanted to share... Oops, there's Latte in the packing box from the advent calendar. Cats in boxes, I'm telling you. Hey, baby. Such a happy boy. Such a happy boy. Yes. Yes, my baby. Okay, mom's got to get to work.
Okay, so here we have days two and six. So I spun it two different ways. I just love the way the colors went together. So the first one, I did a ply of pink and a ply of blue, and then just applied them together to get this lovely candy stripe. It's very pretty. And the colors go so amazingly well together. And then for the second one, I just split the roving and I'd spin a pink, then a blue, then a pink, then a blue, then a pink, then a blue. And then I just chain plied it. So then instead of the candy cane effect, we get the stripes, which is going to look cool when it's worked into the weaving too. So that's day uh, two and six. So we did two days in one, but just like these colors just go so well together. Like it's like they were made for each other. All right. Now it's time to go on to day three. This is going to be. Oops. Day three is Cindy Lou. I believe that is Cindy Lou Who from The Grinch. Yep. We wanted this blend to be very soft while having lots of depth and subtle color shifts to emulate the, um, emulate the brightly colored illustrations in the original books. Faux Angora gives us a soft white, bright white base to this blend, which is balanced with the bold scarlet shades common in Cindy Lou's costumes. We then used a variety of merino and silk to add the blonde of her hair and a stripe of rainbow trilobal nylon for a bold shimmer effect. The resulting blend is a wonderfully soft but also hard wearing, is wonderfully soft but also hard wearing, making it perfect for projects that need more durability. Due to the fake angora and nylon content, it won't felt as firmly as other blends. All right, so this is what we're dealing with. Now, we need to decide how to spin this because it is a very much a multicolored top and our stripes are going vertically. I'm not sure how I want to spin this. We could go for preserving those colors and spin from the fold because you can see how stripey it is. It's so soft though. I think that's the Fogora. Hmm. I'm not sure how we want to spin this. Give me a minute. I'm going to grab my spinner's book of yarn design and we're going to have a look and see what we can find in there. One second. All right. I have my spinner's book of yarn design. This book and the uh, Fleece and Fabric source book are the two things that you should have in your collection. If you don't have these books, you need to buy them because these are brilliant reference manuals. This one in the Spinner's book of, or the Fleece and Fabric source book, they basically will give you a really good overview of everything you ever wanted to know about fleece fibers and spinning. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just going to flip through and stop. Now, if I stop on a page that's not actually a yarn design, I will go to the right and the first one I come to will be it. So let's have a go. All right, I'm going to stop here. So we are on a collapse weave from an energized yarn. So we're going to flip. Well, apparently we're going to be doing a spiral yarn. We're going to flip and flip. So we are going to do a basic spiral yarn. Now this is why I'm telling you, you need this book. It will walk you through making the yarn and it has these handy cards in the back that you can just take to your spinning wheel and use it as a reference. So if we are doing a basic singles, what we need is a commercial thread and a Z single. 
but we're going to use a fat single to make our spiral yarn. So, <sighs> that's still not going to help me on how to spin this yarn because when it's colored like this, if you spin from the end, you lose all those color variations, which may be cool. It might give you a cool looking yarn, but you're going to lose all those colors. You don't get to keep them separate. So I think I'm going to take half and spin it from the fold. So I'm just going to split that in half. I'm going to spin this half from the fold. And then maybe we'll make roll eggs, faux logs with this and see how that turns out. But for now, I'm going to spin this from the fold. And I'm going to make it fairly thick so that we can do a spiral ply, a basic spiral yarn, as instructed by our spinner's book of yarn design. All right, let's get to it. So I started spinning from the fold, but I was finding that I, because of the thin stripes of color, I wasn't getting the definition I wanted. So I went to just spinning straight from the end of the roving. And this is what it looks like. It is so soft and squishy. I plied <clears throat> with this yellow because there's a yellow tone in it. And I thought that that would look good. And it does. I quite like it. So there is our Cindy Lou Who spiral plied. It really needs to be wet set because the doing the spiraling really changes the, um, the twist. And you get a lot of pigtails and stuff. But that'll come out in the wet setting. Here's how it looks. I think it came out really pretty. I'm quite happy with it. So that's day three done. Now let's get on to day four. In a minute, I've apparently got to go chase a cat out of my yard. Tay Tay is losing his mind. See him in the window? <laughs> He's mad.